22 to 39 percent of the entire Indian population is suffering from some or the other kind of arthritis. 76 percent happens to be in the knees, out of which 60 percent female population is affected. There could be many reasons, but two of the most important reasons which we can change is obesity and sedentary lifestyle. So today, I, along with a very, very special guest, physical therapist, Lara Heyman, a certified fitness trainer and the creator of the LYT group, which registered 54,000 followers online. That is big. So me and her would pass some myths and show you some exercises which you can do to prevent osteoarthritis. Let's get started. Myth, you can't prevent osteoarthritis. Fact, you absolutely can. Despite genetics or predispositions, you are in charge. And one way you can prevent it is stay mobile. Stay mobile and have good mechanics. Another way is to maintain a good weight. Extra weight on your body puts extra weight on your joints. If you already have the beginning of osteoarthritis, you can improve the decline. The deterioration by continuing to move, by improving the strength in the muscles, and also again staying at a nice weight so you're not adding more stress. So there's many things you can do to prevent osteoarthritis and to prevent the deterioration once you already have it. That's the fact. No, it's a myth. First of all, I know that everyone feels that osteoarthritis is a part of aging. Sure, the odds get high as you age out, but it's not in everyone's destiny. If you do the right kind of exercises and maintain a lifestyle which is accurate for osteoarthritis, you will not get osteoarthritis. Even old people get away with osteoarthritis and young people have osteoarthritis, secondary to any injury or trauma. This myth is actually important because People feel that they cannot do anything about their joint pain. But no, everything is treatable and osteoarthritis is a part of aging, but not everyone. I am emphasizing on losing weight. The reason is very simple. I will tell you a fact which will blow your mind. If you lose 1 kg of your body weight, you are actually decreasing the pressure on your knees by 4 kgs. This is actually true. I'm not asking for a very big transformation. I'm just asking you to lose some extra kilos, which can actually help your knees. This can prevent osteoarthritis. Another myth, the only thing you can do with osteoarthritis is relieve it through pain medication. That's a myth. There's other things you can do. Facts, here they are. Move. Movement, while it might seem at first that it will irritate it, will actually improve it. You need to keep the joints mobile to strengthen the muscles around the joints, and that will improve your movement and improve the pain. You also can do things like hot and cold compresses when you do feel more pain, and you have been more mobile and you might need a little relief, put on an um, ice pack. See a physical therapist. Get exercises to continue to strengthen your muscles. And then finally, maintain a good weight because again, putting more weight on your body puts more stress on your joints. And that is another way, so don't just use pain meds as a, as a way of alleviating pain. You're, you're in control and that is the real fact. You are in control and so don't just rely on the myth that only relief is going to be in the form of pain medication. Spending life on an easy chair is everyone's dream. But if you're suffering from osteoarthritis, that can backfire. Some forms of physical exercise are very important in osteoarthritis. What they do is that they increase your flexibility, they increase the strength of your muscle, and you can avoid osteoarthritis or even decrease the pain. So what I'm trying to say is that 
some forms of physical exercise like swimming, cycling, or even jogging that can help you ease your pain in osteoarthritis and make you feel better. So no easy chairs. Many people ask me that is osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis the same? The answer is no. They are different things. RA is a different ball game altogether. It has different plans of treatment and it has different symptoms and signs. So firstly, I will talk about osteoarthritis. So osteoarthritis, basically, it is a degenerative uh, condition wherein your cartilage gets degenerated that lines your uh, knee joint. So what happens is because of the friction, you have a lot of pain. So it is a degenerative process. Secondly, about rheumatoid arthritis, it is an autoimmune disease in which the body attacks its own cells. So what happens is that it will attack the cartilage and the cushion nearby and that will cause inflammation and swelling of the joint. So both of them are different and have different treatment options. So don't consider it that osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis are the same. They are very different. I'm here to talk about osteoarthritis of the knee in particular. We often think that osteoarthritis is inevitable. Your mom, your grandma, your dad, your grandpa, somebody had it, so you're going to have it. And that's not the case. It is preventable, and it's preventable through good mechanics. If you have your posture out of alignment, and you move from your spine and pelvis instead of from your hip joint, over time, that moves the thigh, the femur, into the kneecap. And that grinding is wear and tear, which becomes osteoarthritis. So I'm going to give you a few exercises that will help you prevent it and really learn how to hold yourself in a good posture and then move from that place. So the first move, you can be on a mat or you can just be on your floor, but you want to lie on your back and have your feet far enough away. If they're too close, then you'll drive yourself into the knees. You want the feet far enough away. The skull is pulled away as well, so the bottom of your hairline is lifting. Bring your hands onto your thighs. Push into the thighs. Curl your tailbone up and then lift your hips a little bit off the ground. You should immediately feel engagement around your glute and hamstring muscles. All the while, the low back is staying long and the front is staying pulled in. And you can use your hands here, one in hip front and one in back, to pull together, to really enhance that. So this is movement at the hip called hip extension. It's going to make your glutes stronger and your legs stronger, which are really, really important um, components for preventing osteoarthritis. You can pulse, tiny pulses, and this is something you should do every day to really work those hips. And you wanna to get to the point where we're really feeling a lot of heat in the glutes, not any shortening in the low back. So that's one move to do, and then you can lower. Then coming up, Bringing your feet about hip distance apart, we're going to practice that hip extension, but from a standing position. Bring one hand behind your skull and lift the hairline up so that makes your neck in a good alignment and then the hips are in good alignment. Bend your knees and think of sitting straight back without your knees coming forward. Your other hand goes in the hip joint and pushes it back. Then push into the floor and straighten up. And you don't want to push your ribs forward and lock out your knees. So it's bend the knees, sit back, and come forward. So we'll do that. The other way you can do this is have your hands on your thighs and slide down and up. And notice my head stays neutral. I'm not lifting my chin. This is a really important move. Your hips are wheels. They're made to move 
many, many million trillions of cycles. So there, the hip is pulling back toward the glute, so the weight isn't going into the knees, and then you're coming back up. Now another move is you slide your hands down and you pull, shift your weight onto one leg, and lift the opposite heel. So just working that aspect so that your weight shifting, the knee isn't going forward, but your spine is staying long and the abdominal is engaged. Now putting that together, slide down, come up, lift up onto the toe, come down, come up, lift up onto the opposite. So we're practicing weight shifting, so this is part of your gait cycle and how you move every day will determine how those knees feel. This is a little exaggeration when we start to really lift one hip up. Again, not bending in the back at all. So those three exercises you can do every day to really practice getting the hip extension, getting hip flexion, and then putting them together. arthritis in your knees, I want to give you some exercises to do. These exercises are really important to keep your legs strong, your hips strong, and both of those areas more mobile because you really need that to prevent the osteoarthritis getting worse and also to help you move with more ease. It's really nice to have a chair for these exercises. It doesn't matter what kind of chair you have, but We'll start with the first exercise at the very edge of the chair. Once your feet, you want to have your feet grounded and then put your fingers right where the thigh meets the pelvis and hinge forward without any rounding. So you're going to hinge forward to get the weight down into your feet more. You can use your hands on the edge of the chair, push down into your feet and lift off. This often is the hardest part. And we're teaching you also not to move the knee forward more, which feels clunky and sometimes painful. Then bring your hands on your thigh bones and begin to pulse here. Again, I'm not moving the knee forward, but like really warming up and working the leg muscles. The hand can also come to your abdominals, so you can remind yourself not to spill your guts, but to hold in. And you should feel some good heat in the quads right away. Then we'll lower as if you're going to sit and then come back up. So making these moves, and you make them smaller if you feel pain, discomfort, or if there's instability. You can also use your hands on the chair or flip the chair around and have it in front. So it can be like this. If that felt too much, you can practice the same idea as if the chair is behind you here and I'm just giving myself more support. But we want to get these muscles working. So we'll move into that. And notice how I'm really sitting back into the glute and the knee is not going forward. The other thing you can do with the chair is open up some of the tissue of the front of the leg. With osteoarthritis, the motion is usually the motion that you've done repetitively is usually because your pelvis is tipped and that's driven the femur into the knee. We need to open up more of that front hip so that you don't keep doing that and bothering the osteoarthritis. Perhaps your knee can't go on the ground, so this is a nice way to open it where the knee isn't touching but it's off. One of your sides of your hips is on the chair and you use the other hand to hold yourself up. And then you just begin to open up in here. This is a really lovely stretch for the front of the hip and maximize the effect by working your glute as well. So it's not, it's not sagging, it's active. And that will open up some of the muscles we were just working. You can do this on one side. You can also add the arm to get like more lift and maybe a little side bend. These are really lovely stretches, 
You don't want to be tipped for it at all because that just drives the knee the wrong, in the wrong way. You really want to open up the front close to the top of the thigh. You would do it on the other side as well. Then, another way to work the hips, and you can always have a chair nearby because depending on the stage of your osteoarthritis, you might have some instability where the joint is on the bone is on the bone, feels like it might slip. So it's nice to have a chair nearby if you need it, like having it here or something like that. We're gonna stand tall, holding the abdominals in, pulling the skull back in place, and having some buoyancy in the knees. And then put one, put weight in your right leg and lift your left leg out to the left. The goal here is not about getting it way up, but keeping the pelvis from one pelvic point to the other level, so it's not tipping. And then the standing leg is working as hard to hold the whole femur, the thigh, in place. And that's where having your hand on a chair can help. This is really great for a muscle called the gluteus medius, which helps stabilize the top end of the femur. So you would do this anywhere from 10 to 12 times. Firmly um, working the abdominals so you're not sinking into this like that, holding that. You would do one side and then the other. So those exercises are great for strengthening your legs, opening the front of the hip, and working the side of the hip. Those are really important um, elements to help you if you already have osteoarthritis, preventing it from worsening and getting stronger in the legs. So practice that daily, and I hope it helps you.